A Clash of Titans, Southwest Airlines vs. Elliott Investment Management. Southwest Airlines, the beloved airline known for its low fares and friendly service, finds itself locked in a high-stakes battle with Elliott Investment Management, an activist hedge fund with a reputation for shaking things up. This isn't just a clash of corporate cultures, it's a battle for the future of Southwest and, potentially, the entire airline industry. What happens when a champion of passenger-friendly policies faces off against a Wall Street titan focused on maximising shareholder value? Buckle up, folks, because things are about to get turbulent. Setting the stage. A history of discontent. Elliott's interest in Southwest began in 2019 when the hedge fund acquired a significant stake in the airline. Elliott wasted no time in making its presence felt, publicly criticising Southwest's management and demanding changes to the company's operations and capital allocation strategy. The hedge fund argued that Southwest was becoming too complacent, resting on its laurels instead of pursuing aggressive growth and profitability. Elliott pushed for cost-cutting measures, share buybacks and a more shareholder-focused approach. Southwest, initially resistant to Elliott's demands, found itself navigating a period of significant upheaval. The COVID-19 pandemic dealt a devastating blow to the airline industry, forcing Southwest to confront unprecedented challenges and make difficult decisions. Was Elliott's intervention a necessary wake-up call for Southwest? Or did the hedge fund's aggressive tactics exacerbate an already difficult situation? The current battlefield. Truce talks and shareholder pressure. Fast forward to today and the battle lines have shifted. While tensions remain, both sides have shown a willingness to come to the negotiating table. Elliott has reportedly proposed a framework for a truce that would see the hedge fund reduce its stake in Southwest in exchange for concessions on corporate governance and strategy. Under the proposed agreement, Elliott would gain greater influence over Southwest's board of directors, potentially giving the hedge fund more say in key decisions about the airline's future. In return, Elliott would pledge to support Southwest's management and refrain from publicly criticising the company. This potential truce raises crucial questions. Can two entities with such different philosophies find common ground? Will a compromise satisfy both sides, or will it merely be a temporary ceasefire in a longer war for control? Charting the possibilities. What happens if a deal is struck, or not? The outcome of this high-stakes standoff will have far-reaching consequences for Southwest, its shareholders and the flying public. Let's consider the potential scenarios. Scenario 1. A truce is reached. If Elliott and Southwest can hammer out an agreement, it could usher in a period of relative stability for the airline. With Elliott's influence tempered by board representation, Southwest might pursue a more balanced approach, combining its commitment to customer service with a greater focus on shareholder value. However, this outcome hinges on the ability of both sides to honour the terms of the agreement and work collaboratively. Scenario 2. The conflict continues. Should the truce talks collapse, the battle for control of Southwest could escalate, potentially leading to a proxy fight or other aggressive manoeuvres. This scenario would likely create uncertainty and volatility for Southwest, distracting management from the critical task of navigating the post-pandemic recovery. The stakes are high and the outcome remains uncertain. Will Southwest emerge from this conflict stronger and more resilient? 
or will it succumb to the pressures of shareholder activism? The outcome of Southwest's battle with Elliott will have profound implications for the airline's future. A truce could provide Southwest with much needed stability, allowing the company to focus on its operational recovery and long-term growth strategy. However, even if a deal is reached, Southwest will face significant challenges. The airline industry is notoriously competitive and Southwest must adapt to evolving consumer preferences, rising fuel costs and the ongoing threat of economic uncertainty. To thrive in this environment, Southwest must leverage its strengths, its strong brand, loyal customer base and efficient operations, while addressing its weaknesses and pursuing innovation. Can Southwest find the right balance between appeasing investors and staying true to its customer-centric values? Only time will tell, but one thing is certain. The airline's ability to navigate these turbulent times will determine its fate for years to come. Elliott's management's involvement with Southwest is not an isolated incident. The hedge fund has a history of taking stakes in airlines and pushing for changes. In 2013, Elliott invested in Air Canada, advocating for cost reductions and strategic shifts. Similarly, Elliott acquired a stake in Korean Airlines in 2019, urging the company to improve its governance and financial performance. This pattern of airline investments suggests that Elliott sees significant potential for value creation in the industry, often through streamlining operations, optimizing capital allocation, and enhancing shareholder returns. However, Elliott's activist approach has also drawn criticism from those who argue that its short-term focus can come at the expense of long-term value creation and employee well-being. Given Elliott's track record, it's plausible that the hedge fund's involvement with Southwest could lead to significant changes in the airline's strategy, operations and governance. Whether these changes will be beneficial or detrimental to Southwest's long-term health remains to be seen. While the battle between Southwest and Elliott plays out in boardrooms and financial statements, its impact extends far beyond Wall Street. Passengers accustomed to Southwest's low fares and friendly service might wonder if those beloved features will be sacrificed in the name of shareholder value. Will Elliott's influence lead to higher fares, reduced legroom, or fewer perks for frequent flyers? These are legitimate concerns, and Southwest must carefully consider the potential trade-offs between appeasing investors and maintaining its customer-centric identity. Employees, too, are watching this conflict with a mix of apprehension and hope. Elliott's reputation for cost-cutting measures could translate into job losses or reduced benefits. On the other hand, a more profitable and efficient Southwest could create new opportunities for employees and enhance job security. The human cost of this corporate battle cannot be ignored. Southwest must find a way to navigate this conflict in a manner that safeguards its employees' livelihoods and minimizes disruption to its operations. The ongoing saga of Southwest Airlines and Elliott Investment Management provides a fascinating glimpse into the complexities of corporate governance, shareholder activism, and the airline industry's evolving landscape. As we've explored, the potential outcomes of this conflict are numerous, with far-reaching implications for Southwest, its stakeholders, and the future of air travel. Now, it's your turn to weigh in. Do you believe that Elliott's involvement will ultimately benefit or harm Southwest Airlines? What do you think are the most important factors for Southwest to consider as it navigates this challenging period?